boys and girls. I'm Nana Rose. Today's story is called Frog and Toad Are Friends and it's by Arnold Lobel. This is an I can read book which means that it's a simple chapter book that young readers like yourself can begin to look at. It also is the winner of a Caldecott medal. The Caldecott is for the pictures. So this is Frog and Toad Are Friends by Arnold Lobel. The table of contents is the section of a book that tells you the chapters and what page. So this says contents. The first chapter is called Spring and it's on page four. Then The Story on page 16, a lost button on page 28, a swim on page 40, and the letter on page 53. And Arnold Lobel says that this book is for Barbara Borak. It must be really special to have a book dedicated to you. Spring. Frog ran up the path to Toad's house. He knocked on the front door. There was no answer. Toad! Toad! shouted Frog. Wake up! It's spring! Bleh! <laughs> said a voice from inside the house. Toad! Toad! cried Frog. The sun is shining. The snow is melting. Wake up! I'm not here, said the voice. Frog walked into the house. It was dark. All the shutters were closed. Toad, where are you? called Frog. Go away, said the voice from a corner of the room. Toad was lying in bed. He had pulled all the covers over his head. Frog pushed Toad out of bed. He pushed him out of the house and onto the front porch. Toad blinked in the bright sun. Help said Toad. I cannot see anything. Don't be silly, said Frog. What you see is the clear, warm light of April. And it means that we can begin a whole new year again, Toad. Think of it, said Frog. We'll skip through the meadows and run through the woods and swim in the river. In the evenings, we'll sit right here on this front porch and count the stars. You can count them, Frog, said Toad. I will be too tired. I'm going back to bed. Ugh. Toad went back into the house. He got into the bed and pulled the covers over his head again. But Toad, cried Frog, you'll miss all the fun. Listen, Frog, said Toad. How long have I been asleep? You have been asleep since November, said Frog. Well then, said Toad, a little more sleep will not hurt me. Come back again and wake me up at about half past May. Good night, Frog. <sighs> but Toad, said Frog, I will be lonely until then. Toad did not answer. <laughs> He'd fallen asleep. 
Frog looked at Toad's calendar. The November page was still on top. Frog tore off the November page. He tore off the December page and the January page and the February page and the March page. He came to the April page. Frog tore off the April page too. <laughs> Can you see what he's doing? Then Frog ran back to Toad's bed. Toad, Toad, wake up. It's May now. What? said Toad. Can it be May so soon? Yes, said Frog. Look at your calendar. Toad looked at the calendar. The May page was on top. Why, it is May, said Toad as he climbed out of bed. Then he and Frog ran outside to see how the world was looking in the spring. <laughs> it was a little sneaky, wasn't it? In a fun way, but a little sneaky. The next chapter is called The Story. One day in summer, Frog was not feeling well. Toad said, Frog? You are looking quite green. But I always look green, said Frog. I'm a frog. Today you look very green, even for a frog, said Toad. Get into my bed and rest. Toad made Frog a cup of hot tea. Frog drank the tea and then he said, tell me a story while I'm resting. All right, said Toad. Let me think of a story to tell you. Toad thought and thought, but he could not think of a story to tell Frog. I will go out on the front porch and walk up and down, said Toad. Perhaps that will help me to think of a story. Toad walked up and down on the porch for a long time, but he could not think of a story to tell Frog. Toad went into the house and stood on his head. Why are you standing on your head? asked Frog. I hope that if I stand on my head it'll help me to think of a story, said Toad. Toad stood on his head for a long time, but he could not think of a story to tell Frog. Then Toad poured a glass of water over his head. Why are you pouring water over your head? asked Frog. I hope that if I pour water over my head, it'll help me think of a story, said Toad. Toad poured many glasses of water over his head, but he could not think of a story to tell Frog. Then Toad began to bang his head against the wall. Why are you banging your head against the wall? asked Frog. I hope that if I hang bang my head against the wall hard enough, it'll help me think of a story, said Toad. I'm feeling be much better now, Toad, said Frog. I do not think I need a story anymore. Then you can get out of bed and let me get into it, said Toad, because now I feel terrible. Frog said, would you like me to tell you a story, Toad? Yes, said Toad, if you know one. Once upon a time, said Frog, there were two good friends, a frog and a toad. The frog was not feeling well. He asked his friend the toad to tell him a story. The toad could not think of a story. He walked up and down on the porch, but he could not think of a story. He stood on his head, but he could not think of a story. He poured water over his head, 
but he could not think of a story. He banged his head against the wall, but he still could not think of a story. Then the toad did not feel so well, and the frog was feeling better. So the toad went to bed, and the frog got up and told him a story. The end. How was that toad? Oh, how was that toad? said Frog, but Toad did not answer. He'd fallen asleep. The next chapter is called A Lost Button. Toad and Frog went for a long walk. They walked across a large meadow. They walked in the woods. They walked along the river. At last they went back home to Toad's house. Oh, drat, said Toad. Not only do my feet hurt, but I have lost one of my buttons on my jacket. Don't worry, said Frog. We will go back to all the places where we walked. We will soon find your button. They walked back to the large meadow. They began to look for the button in the tall grass. Here's your button, cried Frog. That's not my button, said Toad. My button is black. Oh, that button is black. My button was white. Toad put the black button in his pocket. A sparrow flew down. <whistles> Excuse me, said the sparrow. Did you lose a button? I found one. That's not my button, said Toad. The button has two holes. My button had four holes. Toad put the button with the two holes in his pocket. They went back to the woods and looked on the dark paths. Here's your button, said Frog. That's not my button, cried Toad. That button is small. My button was big. Toad put the small button in his pocket. A raccoon came from behind a tree. I heard you were looking for a button he said. Here is one that I just found. That's not my button, wailed Toad. That button is square. My button was round. Toad put the square button in his pocket. Frog and Toad went back to the river. They looked for the button in the mud. Here's your button, said Frog. Mm, that's not my button, shouted Toad. That button is thin. My button was thick. Toad put the thin button in his pocket. He was very angry. He jumped up and down and screamed. Oh, the whole world is covered with buttons and not one of them is mine. Toad ran home and slammed the door. There, on the floor, he saw his white, four-holed, big, round, thick button. Oh, said Toad. It was here all the time. What a lot of trouble I have made for Frog. Toad took all of the buttons out of his pocket. He took his sewing box down from the shelf. Toad sewed the buttons all over his jacket. The next day, Toad gave his jacket to Frog. Frog thought that it was beautiful. He put it on and jumped for joy. None of the buttons fell off. Toad had sewn them on very well. <laughs>